Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. Today I have the pleasure to show you how you can start composing a song or something that you like on your iPad using Neo D Step Sequencer. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, this is not going to be an explanation of all the controls that are used or are available in the Neo Step Sequencer, but uh, um, it certainly is going to give you one of the many ways that you can use to create your compositions. It's, it's not the only way, and there are other ways to actually go about it, but that is a starting point. And uh, it's a response to one of the requests from one of the subscribers of the channel. Okay, so um, we are inside the UM. Let's click on the plus sign. Let's create a mini channel, which we lost all the Neo instances. And let's create uh, a starting audio channel. As I mentioned, if you want to know how Neo um, Step Sequencer works, I've already created a tutorial, so just search uh, for that on the channel. So let's search for Neo and we bring it up like so. And then let's create um, a audio channel containing Digistick as a, a drum machine. I like to start with uh, drums, uh, but you don't have to. You may want to start, for example, with bass. I like to start with drum. So let's connect the two, like so. If you go inside Digistics, you scroll down, you go here to this panel, you click on the left arrow a couple of times, you go to this point where I said the MIDI mapping, and you can see that um, this sample is triggered by note C2, right? Okay, when you know that, let's go to Neo. Let's bring it up, expand the view. If I click play, it will play the symbol, not good. Let's go and click the setting. Let's click and hold, let's go one octave below. So now it's playing that uh, drum, but it's a little bit too quick. So let's go where it says division and let's set it to two. That's okay, that's much better. So now let's ensure that it plays only um, at the beginning every four bits. So here where it says single, click and hold to move down to rest. The same on the next one, the same on the next one. Then leave this one to single and then you repeat uh, the same on the last three steps. So we'll play the drum here on this step here, and also on this step here where you see single. Let's click play. So that could be the beginning of your drum. Of course you can do every two, um, right? Like so, oops, uh, let's set it to single, like that. And that could be another way to think about it, so. Okay, and that could be good. So let's leave it like that. Why not? Now let's double click on the NIF and let's choose another instance of Neo, like so. And let's connect it again to Digstick 2. So like so. Perfect. Now let's use the second instance to actually create some snare. Okay, again, if I play, not the right sample. Click on settings. Okay. First of all, go lower by an octave, as we've done before. Change the division by two, so it's lower. Next, change the scale to chromatic, so that we can choose all the different notes of the scale chromatically, not just uh, the one per, um, which belongs to the scale. And the reason is that if you connect a keyboard here, you can see that the sample I used or assigned chromatically to all the notes. So when you know that, you use a chromatic scale. So again, let's ensure that the um, the two are connected. They are connected, perfect. So we go here, chromatic, same division, one, and one octave lower. Now, let's have it to um, play here on the third. So we go up and we select um, the flat, because that will be the snare. We set this to rest, rest, and rest, and we repeat the same like so. So in this case, we should have a nice bit. Mm -hmm. 
So hopefully it's starting to make sense in terms of how we are going to create, uh, well, first of all, a drum pattern, but then we continue to actually add bass, etc., etc. So let's create another instance of Neo, like so. Perfect. Let's connect it again to Digistick, um, the, the third instance. Here we go with Neo. Okay, same process. We don't like that. So, uh, chromatic scale. Oops. Oh, here we go. There you are. L one octave uh, lower. Subdivision, we go to two. And um, let's find the right node. Perfect. So that is uh, what I needed. So let's hide uh, this keyboard. Let's maximize the Neo, like so. Now let's go to modifier. Let's click add a modifier. And um, where it says unassigned, click on it, click on it, on unassigned. Let's go to uh, velocity and then lower the velocity every to something like that, as you like. Now let's change the division here to two as well. I'm not doing it precisely, but that actually is the old point because it makes it more interesting, more humanized in terms of not having the same values. But you could insert the same value for velocity. Okay, now let's click on the plus sign here. Let's create a new audio channel. And let's bring in, uh, uh, why not, King of Bass. There you are. So let's choose uh, a preset and we go here, we choose a category. Uh, why don't we choose this R&B here? Let's try, see what it sounds like and to increase the volume. The volume normally is quite high on King of Bass, so making the necessary adjustment. So double click again and let's create a new instance of Neom, like so. And let's connect it to King of Base. So here we go. So we have four instances of Neo. Now, so let's uh, bring this up. Let's go to setting. Let's lower it by at least one octave. Let's change the scale to minor and the division again, divide those by two. Let's click play. Yeah, sounds the right octave. Okay, perfect. Now let's go to modifier. Let's add a modifier. Let's click on unassigned and let's click on type unassigned and let's go to transpose. Okay, now where it says um, let's transpose up, so let's click play. Transpose and let's transpose notes. So I decreased a little bit that snare volume, that sample, because it's too high. You can see it was picking. Okay, perfect. Now we have a little of a pattern. And if you want to spice it up, for example, you could say here, instead of order, linear, go to random. Say what it sounds like. It would be random. Hmm, 
less than anything there. Okay, perfect. So you might just say, okay, you have created a pattern for drums and for bass. How do you go to start creating a song? Well, this is where we start to use now the sequencer, the different states. Okay, so we have a state here. For simplicity, let's create four of them. Okay, click and drag here to copy, click and drag to copy, click and drag to copy. Now click and drag this one up like so. We have the first state, then B, then C, and then D, and it will be played sequentially. Okay, so for this first one, which is a kick drum, we leave it like that. Oops, we need to activate this, click and hold, and we go to on and click play. Okay, perfect. Now we want the snare to start on the second state. We click on the states here. We copy it like so. So for four different states, we go to the first one, click and drag like so, and we repeat the process. So we have the four state one after the other. We set the sequencer to on. We go to the first state here, right? And we set it all to rest so that we don't have that snare, but for the second, it will start to play. So. So you can hear that the snares are coming in from the second um, set of steps. Now let's go to the first, uh, third instance of Neil. Let's repeat the process. Let's go to state. We copy second to B, A to B, B to C, C to D, we actually start to, to concatenate all the different state, like so, click, drag and drop, set the sequencer to on, like that, we are on the first one. Um, now let's uh, remove the modifier, and on the first one we don't want to have uh, the uh, hi-hat playing, so we set everything to rest. Let's click play. Perfect. Now let's continue like so. We want um, to go to the pace and why not? Let's remove this, this modifier. Let's go to state. We copy again. I don't, you don't have to do four different states. You can do two. It will be enough for this example, but just to give you an idea of how you could, would go about uh, creating uh, um, your, um, your song, your composition. We go to state A and we set it all to rest. So we don't have uh, any sounds being played. Of course, I could have uh, used the reset count instead of just to modify every single step. It doesn't really matter. Click and copy again um, to B. So the first two are actually uh, the same. There is no playing. Oh, I could have dragged state A here, okay, as a second state to be played. Click here to on. Let's go back at the beginning. Click play. Because it plays now um, only two measure here, C and D, state C and D, but you can continue like so, you can add the additional one. Indeed, you can add now another instrument, so uh, you could go, for example, and uh, add ISIM. If you want to bring in, for example, some strings or some pad, you can add another uh, neo sequencer, link, to, link the two together. Um, like so, and uh, let's listen. Yeah, that's fine. We can uh, try with that one. And and then you can start to have fun again. And um, yeah, and uh, let's set these to minor. Let's set these, the division, perhaps instead of two, we go to uh, eight or even slower, you can go to 16, uh, 32, really depends what you are trying to do and what you prefer to do, right?
Astray Game. Again, it's just an example. And again, now you will start with state and you will start to create the different state for uh, that particular path sound and you decide when that will kick in. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how you would go about creating a song or a composition in using Neo as a step sequencer. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time.